Welcome back to MathSpark. In this video, we look at the first of three problems designed to illustrate the active homework process. So you might remember that we defined homework as the means by which we practice the mechanical techniques of a course and examine and present our thought process, and we use the POIA four-step process to work our way through a problem set. We left off with three examples, so let's focus on the first of the three examples. Complete the factoring 2x cubed plus 14x squared plus 20. To get started, let's get a piece of scratch paper and get working. The first step of the process is to understand the problem, which means I'm going to write the problem down. Complete the factoring 2x cubed plus 14x squared plus 20x. It's a good habit to get into to write the complete problem down every time you do a homework problem. It will help connect the problem prompt what's being asked with the eventual plan you devise. One of the most common problems students have on mathematics exams in college is simply knowing what the problem is asking. By getting in the habit of writing the entire problem prompt down, you'll connect the phrasing with the techniques you do. Now I know that to factor something is to write it as a product of simpler pieces. The two most common techniques for factoring are to pull out common terms, and to split trinomials, which are polynomials with three terms, using the rectangular method or FOIL. So these two techniques are going to form my plan of attack. We'll factor out as much common terms as we can, and then since we have three pieces left over, we'll attempt to split the remaining trinomial. So now that we have a plan, we can move on to step three, putting that plan into action. So we have our original polynomial, 2x cubed plus 14x squared plus 20x. So the first thing I'm going to attempt to do is to factor out any terms who are common to all of the pieces. Now, given all of the constants, the 2, the 14, and the 20, it's clear that there's a 2 who's common to all of these. Also, given the x cubed, the x squared, and the x, there's an x common to all of these terms. And so 2x is the largest common term I can pull out. So let's do that. If we pull out a 2x from 2x cubed, the 2 is gone. One of the x's is gone, which means there's an x squared left over. If we pull a 2x out of 14x squared, 2 out of 14 leaves a 7, and an x out of an x squared leaves an x. And if we pull a 2x out of 20x, 2 out of 20 leaves 10, and we factored out the lone x. And so we have a factorization as 2x times the binomial x squared plus 7x plus 20. So I've taken care of the first step. Nothing else is common. Now to split a trinomial, I could attempt to undo the rectangular method. I would know that I'm trying to factor this into two terms, who when I multiply them out will get me x squared plus 7x plus 10. Now to work this out, I'm going to attempt to undo the rectangular process. I'd like to come up with what two monomials will multiply each other to get me the x squared plus 7x plus 10. I know that the two entries in the corner ought to be the x squared and the 10. That would suggest that these first two entries need to be both x's in order to multiply their way through. The last two entries have to multiply to get me the number 10. Numbers who multiply to get me a 10 might include 2 and 5, or 1 and 10. If I attempt to do a 2 and a 5, then the rectangular method would say that the remaining terms would be a 2x and a 5x, and 2x plus 5x would be a 7x. And so we've got the factorization, x plus 2 and x plus 5. And so that's our final answer. But it's not the final step of the process. Step 4 in the Poya process is to look back at what we've done. For example, is there any way that we could check our work? Well, since factoring is expressing a sum as a product, one of the ways to check it would be to simply expand the product out and to see whether or not we return to the original polynomial. So let me attempt doing that. I'll first distribute the 2x in. So I'm going to have 2x squared plus 2 times 2x, which is 4x, times x plus 5. And now if I multiply these out using the rectangular method, I have an x plus 5 as my second term, a 2x squared, and a 4x. That's going to get me 2x cubed. 2x squared times 5 is 10x squared. 4x times x is 4x squared. And 4x times 5 is 20x. And so if I add those entries up, we're going to have a 2x cubed. 10x squared plus 4x squared is 14x squared. 
and a 20x, which matches the original value. A slightly different check, not as thorough, but sometimes a little bit easier to do in a pinch, would be to test whether or not 2x cubed plus 14x squared plus 20x is equal to 2x times x plus 2 times x plus 5 at a single point, or one or two points. For example, we could test it at x equals 1. If I plug in x equals 1 on the left-hand side, I'm going to get 2 plus 14 plus 20, which would be 16 plus 20, or 36. On the right-hand side, I'm going to have 2 times 3 times 6. 6 times 6 is also 36. So since these two expressions match at x equals 1, that would be evidence in favor of them being equal. Now it's worth pointing out that all of the work I've been doing here should really be thought of as scratch work. I was attempting to come up with a method for solving it and checking my answer. So for my final write-up, one where I can put all of my thoughts together cleanly, it might look something like this. 2x cubed plus 14x squared plus 20x is equal to 2x times x squared plus 7x plus 10 because I pulled out common terms. And this is equal to 2x times x plus 2 times x plus 5 by factoring the trinomial. And so we've completed the first problem. So that takes care of the first problem. In the next video, we'll handle the second problem.